number one, I am a rock rib conservative, unabashedly so. Many of you listen to the program know that. And when I talk about conservatism, do for self is as conservative as it comes. I'm a capitalist. I believe in the free enterprise system. I believe that people need to get paid. They call me get paid Wade. I want everybody to eat. Everybody's got to eat. Now here's the deal. I invite your participation going forward. I want you to continue to watch CWU TV and listen to the Kim Wade Show at WYAB 103.9 FM, WYAB.com, Monday through Fridays from four to six. Continue to listen in, add your input, and see if we can be the example for all of America to point to and say, they doing it right down in Jackson, Mississippi. Mm. Message in there for a believer. Welcome to Wade 2025 on CWU-TV on YouTube, CWTV on, excuse me, CWTV Network on Facebook, and CWTV on Rumble. Leave your comments, like, share, and subscribe to our channels. All right, folks, we're back. It's March 12th, and we've got a new show here. The topic of today's show is renegotiating the future, the future of Jackson, the future of America, the future of Mississippi. We need to start asking the question, let's weigh in the balance, the cost-benefit ratio of what we've been doing, what's being proposed for the future, and see if we need, might need to make some changes, personnel changes, attitude changes. Folks, as the old folks used to say, we need to make some adjustments, or as they would say, just adjustments. And I think we're capable of doing it. One of the things we're going to be talking about today, again, is the cost-benefit analysis of what we're doing. You know, back when uh, the last 30, 40 years when we were trying to bring down the walls of Democrat segregation and discrimination in this country, particularly here in Mississippi, uh, the, just throwing anything at the wall of, of, of racism and coarse degradation and all those things, you would see results. You see bricks flying and pieces of the wall coming down. Well, because the wall was so all-encompassing, it didn't take much to make an effect on the wall. But now, we need to be more specific. In other words, we need to be more targeted in our approach to try to level the playing field of society, if that's one of our goals. Try to bring prosperity to as many people as we can, if that's one of our goals. But doing it the way we've been doing it is no longer apropos. And this is all we're seeing here. You know, over the last couple of weeks, and for those of you who've been listening to my program for years and years, uh, I have been very, very vocal about my desire to want to see us do better. And some would say that, okay, Kim, you could say it a little nicer. You could bring it and wrap it in a velvet glove and all that. Well, that's not my ministry. Maybe somebody following behind me will be able to bring the same message in a, in a manner that everybody have their ears tickled and they want to just follow right behind it. Great. But here's the deal. The future is where we're going to spend the rest of our lives. We have to prepare for that. And one of the overarching things that I see not being done from the cost-benefit ratio standpoint, and that is the policies that we have done in the past have helped those of us who, like myself, had a good run, enjoy the benefit of the civil rights movement, uh, all the government programs, et cetera, et cetera. But then we're not leaving anything for our kids. And I think our policies now and going forward actually should have always been what's best for our kids. And it's not trite. It's not something, oh, well, you, re you said that before. I'm saying it because this is the formula. Excuse me. This is the formula that we need to use because without this, all we're doing is just extending our own ego. We're, we're feeling good about ourselves and us being the first ones to do this, that, and the other. Every policy that we put forth has to be looking at, okay, are our kids going to be better off? Will their futures be secured? Will they have a strong hold on life? Will they be able to make their way in life? Will they, will they, will they be able to stand independent and not have to be beholden to anyone else? And that's our goal. So when we talk about the cost-benefit analysis, we look at, uh, like I said, the events of the recent weeks here in Mississippi during the legislative session and all the hoopla regarding House Bill 1020, which we've spoken on. But think about the approach that, that has come down. The question that comes to my mind, who's guiding this thing? 
I mean, we know who introduced the bill uh, and how the bill got into the hopper and being consideration, but who's, who's leading the response in opposition to the bill? And that's not like people can't oppose or have a different viewpoint on how the bill is supposed to be written. I understand that. But I want to know, who, who is that individual? Who's the shot caller? Because what I see from where I'm sitting, you know, my vantage point on the political totem pole, I see people out there unnecessarily aggravating the whole process with a chip on their shoulder, with anger. And I'm saying, guys, you guys are grown men and women. Why are you down there talking to each other like that? Are you talking to the uh, proponents of the bill or the op opponents of the bill? And quite honestly, Jay, I have not heard the proponents of the bill talking to the opponents of the bill in a manner that I would consider disrespectful or disrespectful of the views, anything. But on the other side, the opponents, they're coming like, okay, we're never going to have to work with these people again. And I'm saying, what is your point? And each individual in the legislative process, individually, they're not, they're not known as these firebrands. When you talk to some of these black legislators on a one-on-one -on -one basis, a white talking to a black legislator, they don't view them as some angry Negro. They don't view John Horn or Sally Norwood that way. So why are they acting this way now? You guys don't need to grandstand for the black community. You need to be elevating us in terms of how we view, deal with things, and get things done. But see, that's that approach from 30, 40, 50 years ago. And again, that's not apropos today because we're not getting a large enough return on our money for this here, okay? So you guys want to tell us how hard it is and how racism still exists? Folks, there's people out here who are doing bad, and they're doing bad because you're not making conditions better where they can do better for themselves. And this is what we're talking about here, about renegotiating the future. I want to know who is the one who's leading the charge what kind of deals are you cutting, and on whose behalf are you cutting them? Because we look at the widespread uh, uh, poverty, the widespread educational failures, the crime that's out of control. Our kids are getting younger and younger who are involved with some of the most heinous crimes on the books. And yet, your thing is how pernicious, pernicious uh, racism is. Come on, dog. respectfully, we got the, no. We demand more. I'm serious. You got, you got to do something different. Now, what I would like for the, you guys to do, and I know you say, well, who, who are you, Kim Wade? Well, my question, who are you? Who did you tell us you were when you ran for office? You told us that you had a cure for everything from bad breath to bunions. And now you get down there and you can't figure out how to write a bill. And yet you criticize everybody who has written a bill. That's immature. That's unacceptable. And we expect more of you. So we got a few more days left in this legislative site, uh, cycle for this year, and we want to know what's the game plan going into the next legislative se session. Who's the shot caller? Who's the adult? Who's going to bring back some real results? We need some Ws. We need some wins. And all we get from you guys are the same thing is that, you know, we be not able. Racism is so strong. This is the same old Jim Crow, whatever. Well, navigate around it. The people who built the platform that you stand on right now, they navigated around it. When we came up out of slavery, we had absolutely nothing. They navigated around it. Now you're trying to say all the vestiges of slavery, Jim Crow, and coarse degradation jumped over all those generations and landed on our generation. And now we're incapacitated in the face of somebody rolling their eyeballs at us or telling us no. This is, unex this is un no. Your behavior is unacceptable. You got to grow up. If you feel like I'm talking down to you, that's not my intention. But look, you put yourself in this position. You're failing to deliver on something that's most critical to the most of us, the biggest and largest portion of the community. And then you act like it's not a big deal. It's a big deal. So what we're going to be talking about in the next session here, we'll be talking about the stakeholders. Who are the st stakeholders and who speaks for them? Because at the end of the day, these problems aren't insurmountable. But the question that I keep coming back to is, why aren't you people interested in being the best that we can be? Why aren't you interested if nobody else in the country does, it, does things right? Why can't we the blacks in Jackson, we the blacks in Hines County, we the blacks in Mississippi, we the people of Mississippi, can't do it right 
and set the example for the rest of the nation to follow. Why can't we just work together? You guys are trying to run this whole race thing because it covers up the fact that you're not effective. And there's no reason why you can't be effective other than nobody's putting any pressure on you to change. Well, call me pressure. I'm here. Or as Prime used to say, I'm coming. And we're capable of doing it, guys. Now, I know you got your feathers ruffled, you're feeling personally insulted, but that's because you've always been in it for you. Think about your parents and the sacrifice that they, and the indignities, they, indignities that they had to experience so you can be where you are today. So we're just asking that you give some consideration to growing up, give some consideration to thinking about things, how can you work with others, others who don't look like you, but who have the right ideals. It's not about white supremacy, it's about right being supreme. Are you willing to join us? What we're gonna do is take a break when we come back. Who are the stakeholders? I am Chef Shishi, the owner of Just In Time, the featured chef of the JMMF Culinary Kitchen, where we prepare farm to fork centered, healthier, all natural foods in the urban community. Call in now at 601-397-6752. Call in now at 601-397-6752. All right, welcome back to Wade 2025 on CW-TV on YouTube, CW-TV Network on Facebook, and CW-TV on Rumble. Leave your comments, like, share, and subscribe to our channels. All right, folks, we're back. Segment two of the Wade 2025 show. Look, the question has to be raised. You know, all last week and the last couple of weeks, we've been hearing about stakeholders. They didn't talk to the stakeholders. They won't talk to the stakeholders, they being the legislators regarding House Bill 1020. Who are the stakeholders? I saw the Hines County DA Jody Owen saying that he was a stakeholder who hadn't been consulted. I've heard uh, some, uh, uh, according to media reports, that uh, some of the judges said that they hadn't been consulted. Some of the Hines County delegation said that they hadn't been consulted as stakeholders. Well, guess what? I'm a stakeholder too. And as I would say, what about me? When y'all gonna ask, what do you want Radio Strongman? What do you want Jackson? What do you want Hines County? Because the stakeholders, first of all, you need to show calls as to how you ended up outside of the loop when you down there in the mist, in the belly of the beast. Because this goes back to, do we need to have some personnel changes? Now look, my thing is everybody get to keep the job who's doing their job. Now if you're not doing your job, you know, you don't get no divine right of kings where you just get to sit there. So this is why the requirements are gonna get raised on what we're gonna be looking for going forward. So I'm a stakeholder and I want less crime in the city of Jackson. I don't wanna hear a Hines County DA say that I don't want either of the bills if I can't get everything. Bruh, this is life. This is called life in the big city. You don't always get everything you want. You know that, you're a grown man. So going forward, those words that the DA said, those words that the legislator said, those words that Jackson Mayor Chokwe Lumumba said regarding House Bill 2020 and how it was racist and all that stuff, what we're gonna do, we're gonna start doing a body count. All the people who die in the CCID going forward, over the next two years or until the next legislative session. We're gonna be recording it, reporting it, and telling you about it here at CW-TV, Wade 2025, and on the Kim Wade Show on the radio, Monday through Fridays, four to six, at WYAB 103.9 FM. Because again, this is all part of the accountability. These people have been skating for a long time, and this skating has allowed them to deliver absolutely nothing. We're seeing, as I said earlier, all this widespread just poverty 
trash, this uh, uh, poverty of the spirit being manifested in greater numbers every day, every year, and we're supposed to be happy with this. Nope, it's not happening anymore, Hoss. And so this is why I'm asking you, who are the stakeholders? You're a stakeholder. So you need to talk to your representatives, your mayors, your council people. Uh, when you see them, guys, I'm a stakeholder too, and I'm expecting more since you chose to offer yourself up to be a representative, and we honored you with our vote for you to be in that position. And now we're expecting you to deliver. Now, if you say uh, you're not interested or you demonstrate that you're not capable, then be man or woman enough to step down, step away, step aside. Because there are people out there, and I think there are a lot of young people out there who want to come up and do something. But the main thing we have to do is get out of this angry Negro mode. Yeah, it's cute, yada, 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 yada. It, it, it has its place, had its place. But now we need to deliver. There's nothing wrong with working with people of another color across the aisle because from where I'm sitting, the only people show consistent concern for the problems we're facing here in the city of Jackson are the white legislators in the House and in the Senate and the governor. It was the governor, Governor Bryant, along with uh, Lieutenant Governor uh, Tate Reeves, who helped deliver the uh, legislation that required the kids to be able to read by third grade, read at grade level by third grade, and then be tested subsequently every couple of years thereafter. Everybody benefits from that. <clears throat> but I remember then, even that was being proposed that they were cause of racism. We need to start asking, who keeps initiating these, 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 these accusations that everything is racism? Because we're not benefiting from it as a community. Look at the, again, 10, 12, 13 year old kids are involved in some of these uh, class A felonies. And we think that doing the same thing is okay. Nope, it's not guys. This has got to change. And this is why when you see me uh, uh, entertaining a foray into politics to run for mayor, it's because we're not gonna have another mayoral race that's just full of discussions about who's gonna get the biggest set-aside check. No, we're not doing that anymore. Like I said, if, if marching for your rights and all that kind of crap, if you're transgender, or LGBT, or you're angry Negro, all that stuff, my administration's not gonna be for you. But if you're interested in making some, some progress as a city and as individuals, if you just wanna get your grind on, you wanna get your hustle on, if you just want a better neighborhood, if you want city services delivered for the tax dollars that you're paying, then I'm your huckleberry. But if you just want to have your ego stroked about being black, because guess what? You're going to be that color regardless. Whether I'm in office or some yahoo's in office, the bottom line is you're going to be that same color. Why, don't you, why can't you be interested, and this is just, just me, why can't you be interested in being the example for the nation? The things that we're talking about doing the prosperity that we're talking about bringing is prosperity that's already in the hearts, hopes, dreams, and aspirations of the people who live here. Those hopes, dreams, and aspirations are being thwarted by people who sit up there and talk about nothing but race. When race is not holding them da down. Their pockets are on swole, their kids are doing good, they're getting in the best schools, and yet you out here living from pillar to post, eating beanie weenies, picking cans up, trying to get your hustle on, trying to meet go from paycheck to paycheck while they got the hookup. They're getting theirs off the top. I'm just saying, guys, it's because they're hiding behind the accusations of race. Does racism exist? Yeah. But it's about 19th or 20th on the list of things that's affecting why we can't get our crap together. So what I'm proposing to you is that we start demanding that we're stakeholders too and we want results. We want you guys to work with people. We want you to tone down the rhetoric about racism if you got real evidence of racism, then it'll be there. But people who constantly say this can never prove it. I had a gentleman call the program the other day talking about he moved here from Florida and that racism was in Florida. And I asked him, I said, well, tell me about the racism that you experienced. I'm still waiting. And this happens all the time. So that's what I'm saying, folks. Why are we squandering all this opportunity brought to us at great sacrifice by those who went before us 
on the altar of this foolishness that racism is everywhere. You know what is systemic? It ain't, ain't racism. Stupidity, incompetence, indifference. Clearly, that's systemic. It's institutionalized and it's unacceptable. So what I'm saying to you is, folks, we need to join a coalition because the people who are constantly complaining about race, there are more of us than there are of them. But those individuals get the benefit of the media, the airwaves. This is one of the reasons why we have Wade 2025. And God bless CWU-TV for making this opportunity available. And I would encourage you, if you're interested in getting your viewpoints out, check with CWU-TV and they can help you bring your message forward. Because it may be contrary to mine, but it's a message that needs to be heard. We're not going to be shouted down by those who produce the least, but take the most. And many, many of the people who are pushing this narrative about the race being the biggest thing and behind every policy and legislation that's proposed, we can't accept that. It'd be a different thing that they were saying that while they offered up their own solutions. But time after time again, there are no solutions offered. It's just that you're wrong, you're racist, you're white. No, grow up, guys. Grow up. We're better than this. Our kids demand more. The future demands more. We're blessed to be in this country. We've got opportunity raining down on us like, like a raindrops. And all we have to do is just organize ourselves, be better stewards of what God has blessed us with, and we can turn this around. Again, the future, our kids deserve it. The future of our country, our city, our county, our state deserves that you and I start working together. So won't you join with me and others as we go forward, working together with those who are willing to work with us on the common problems and common solutions. We're not gonna be hurling accusations of racism or any other kind of ism. We're gonna be talking about progress. And we're talking progressiveness. We're talking about progress. Everybody's got to eat. We'll be right back. I am Chef Shishi, the owner of Just In Time, the featured chef of the JMMF Culinary Kitchen, where we prepare farm to fork centered, healthier, all natural foods in the urban community. Call in now at 601-397-6752. Call in now at 601-397-6752. All right, welcome back to Wade 2025 on CWU-TV on YouTube, CWU-TV Network on Facebook, CWU-TV on Rumble. Leave your comments, like, share, and subscribe to our channels. All right, folks, this is the last segment of today's show. The question is, can the pie be cut any thinner? In other words, can everybody eat or can more people eat than, than that's presently eating? And I say absolutely, not only absolutely, oh, it's going to happen. Because here's the deal. When we talk about can the pie be cut any thinner, we're talking about opportunities for those who want to better their lives. Or if they just want to live in peace. If that's what they consider better in their lives, where they can sit on their front porch without having <clears throat> drive-by shootings from del juvenile delinquents who are running amok in our streets. Or city services that are never coming so their sewage is backing up in their yard or they can't get out of their driveway because of the potholes and things like that. Folks, there's a method to the madness. It's not about just having ideals. It's about how do you fund the ideals that you have. And this is what I see lacking when I hear the leaders of the stakeholders go forward and talk to the state, the federal government, or to the community meetings and all this stuff. Folks, how do you fund all this stuff? And I'm seeing a lack of a plan on how to get there. And this is one of the reasons why Wade 2025, I think that campaign would be so much different than what's been offered in the past, because we're going to be talking about how do you get the resources? How do you grow the resources to do all these things or to just provide basic city services? One of the things you have to do is 
our property taxes. Well, the property taxes is pretty much the cash register to the city. So when property values go down, that means the revenues to run the city goes down. And we see a, 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 an indifference, or maybe it's an ignorance and indifference to uh, the role property values play in the policies that are being advocated. When I heard the district attorney uh, at the Capitol there last week, and I was concerned because FedEx had just announced that they were going to stop delivering packages to 39204 because of the crime problems. Now that tells me that we're, we're really not in a position to say, uh, well, we don't need to do anything about the uh, uh, problems with crime or the judicial system, the backlogs, et cetera, this year if we can't get everything we want. No. 39204, that's the zip code for Jackson State. I mean, that's a pretty big deal. So when you hear elected officials say something like that, it tells me that they're not truly appreciative of how their role goes into keeping the property values sustainable for running our government. And this is what we're going to be talking about with Away 2025. Because we don't need some extraordinary leader. I'm not, no, I'm not extraordinary. I'm not a leader. What I intend to do is be a good asset manager, a good property manager. What I would do, I would hire a city manager to handle the day-to-day -day operation of the city. Someone who, that's what they do well. I'm going to be a big picture guy making sure that the momentum, that money feels safe in Jackson. Because as I told you at the beginning, I'm a capitalist. Capitalism is what solved problems, not all this compassion that you say you have. Because if everybody who said they care actually cared, we wouldn't have the problems that we have. So what we want to do and what I see is possible, the property values and the property in Jackson, whether it be residential or commercial, it represents a big, let's just say a ball of money. There's cash in there. Now we don't have oil wells or uh, gold mines or anything like that in the city of Jackson as far as assets that we can draft and tap into, but we can tap into the real estate that exists. Part of the ways of getting, that out, getting the money out of that real estate is that we got to start elevating our game. We got to clean up our community. And number, number one, we have to start right now, not just going out picking up the paper because we need to do that, but we need to start again, educating our kids. Just like we can, if we can educate our kids about this transgender crap, groom them as they call it, we can groom, them now, we can groom these kids about not throwing trash down. These kids are watching their brothers, sisters, dad, uncles, mothers, fathers, take their little plastic bag that they get and put all their Popeyes uh, wrappers and Wendy wrappers and stuff and tie it in these little knot and throw it out the window. When they could just leave it in there until they get home and throw it out. As trite as that might seem, that doesn't cost a dime. And as we start picking up our, behind ourselves, cleaning up, the, the space, say, in between your property and the curb, scraping up all that dirt, leaves, trash, you have to do it. The city's supposed to do it, but we, we don't have the funds right now. We can't pay for all the government that we need to raise the property values and to raise the quality of life and improve the quality of life that we need. So we're going to have to ask of you to help out. If you would just clean out in front of your house, and if you're really generous, clean out the house next door if they won't do it. And start there. Because remember when you bought your home, you moved into that neighborhood, when you were driving through there looking, oh, I like this. Well, this is how you do it. And we're going to start there getting those property values up. And we're going to be working with the uh, investment community, real estate investors, commercial and residential, and homeowners. When you want to sell your home, I'm going to encourage you, don't just put it out there on the market. Fix it up. Make it move in ready, and then put it on an auction. Say Saturday morning, we're going to be auctioning off 123 Main Street. That people come through there, oh man, this is really nice. Make it move in ready. So instead of you selling that house for $50,000, you sell it for 60. Because somebody likes it just that much. It's just so move in ready. They can move in there, start cooking dinner that evening, go to bed at night, yada, yada, yada. And then at 60000 that's adding $10,000 worth of value to the tax rolls. People don't mind paying an extra $10,000 in taxes if it means that their property's worth that much, but they don't want to be paying $10,000 extra in taxes and their property's worth $10,000 less. 
there is a method to the madness. And one of the things we want to do, we want to work with the neighborhood associations and get them to say, look, Presidential Hills, you guys do a great job of maintaining your, your community best you can. You got a strong neighborhood association. When you call the city and say, hey, man, we got a pothole over here on the corner, Abraham Lincoln and John F. Kennedy or whatever, we're Johnny on the spot. And the reason why, because you have pride of ownership and you don't need a whole lot to get your community where you feel good about your community. You know what, five or 10, 15 years ago, we, we didn't have these concerns about the streets like we have now. Five or 10 years ago, we didn't even think about water. I mean, you know, in terms of you can't drink it. There are people who didn't want to drink it. But now these things are all at the forefront of our minds because of neglect, indifference, and incompetence. We can turn all that around. We're just as capable of running the city as anybody else. And what I'm saying is, guys, let's lift our gaze, okay? We spend way too much time I uh, was carping about racism. We need to be talking about how we're going to make this city move. So we're going to just talk about the real estate aspect of it first time, but then we're going to be moving on to the different areas. We're going to improve the quality of life. Why should our parks not have all the wood chippings down there so the kid ain't, kids don't have to swing on, uh, uh, come down the uh, slide into the mud? When you go to Madison and Ridgeland and places like that, they got wood chips stacked this high on their playgrounds. This is a decision. We spend too much money on legal lawsuits that the mayor has an interest in, as opposed to improving the quality of life of our city. This is not rocket science. And there are a lot of people who want to help out, but we're not going to be running them off, ticking them off by constantly calling them racist, calling them Uncle Toms, or calling them whatever. If they call, if we call them anything, we're calling them to, hey, help us out. But we're capable of making these changes. In fact, we have to make these changes. We've got too much to lose, and there's too much opportunity to avail ourselves of. So I'm asking that we consider turning our caps around, straightening our shoulders up, and again, just having a new attitude about how we're going to approach this here. We have what we need to make Jackson better. We just need you to put in a little work, a little, work, a little extra effort right now, and once we get where we're going, you'll be saying, oh, yeah, this is right where I want it to be. It's not rocket science. What they're doing up in Madison, Ridgeland, Flowood, Pearl, Brandon is not proprietary. It's not rocket science. It's a wheel. We've been led by people who have been benefiting by keeping everybody angry and producing absolutely nothing for anybody other than themselves. Are they bad people? I'll let you be the judge of that. But are they incompetent, indifferent, in many cases corrupt? There's evidence of that. And they can distinguish themselves by deciding what they're going to do. You can hate on Radio Strongman, or you can put your shoulder against the wheel, and let's roll our sleeves up. Let's get this done. It's not rocket science. So let's turn some caps around. We're going to take a break. See you next week. Number one, I am a rock rib conservative. Unabashedly so. Many of you listen to the program know that. And when I talk about conservatism, do for self is as conservative as it comes. I'm a capitalist. I believe in the free enterprise system. I believe that people need to get paid. They call it way. want everybody to eat. Everybody's got to eat. Now here's the deal. I invite your participation going forward. I want you to continue CWU TV and listen to the Kim Wade Show at WYAB 103.9 FM, WYAB.com, Monday through Fridays from four to six. Continue to listen in, add your input, and see the example for all of America to point to and say, they're doing it right down in Jackson, Mississippi. Mm. Now there's a message in there for a believer. 